Hi, hi, hi. hi everybody, today is February 9th, 2011, and welcome to the WDW Newscast. I am Lou Mangello from WDW Radio. I'm also the author of the Walt Disney World Trivia Books and the Audio Guides to Walt Disney World. Be sure and join us every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern at WDWNewscast.com, where, like tonight, we'll be doing a live interactive news show covering Walt Disney World in Florida, and you can be part of the discussion and the broadcast talk about the news real time in the chat room. Remember, if you can't make it, that's okay. You can come by, watch the newscast on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash radio. I also put the audio-only portion of the newscast in the iTunes feed. Again, go to iTunes, search for WW Radio. You can also get notified of upcoming newscasts, as well as lots of other stuff that's going on by following me on Twitter. I'm at Lou Mangello. And by joining the WDW Radio friend page over on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash WDW Radio. <laughs> Tonight we are here, as you can see, at Walt Disney World. We are on the boardwalk. But I want to remind you that uh, part of the reason why we're having such a good time on this trip is because I've been using touringplans.com. They are the sponsor of this and every broadcast. They are the research team behind the unofficial guide to Walt Disney World. There you can find a, a crowd calendar that gives you the best parks to visit. It's got touring plans for all the Disney theme parks, including Disneyland, the water parks, and whether you're going with your kids or with adults or going solo, there's a touring plan for you. And don't forget, too, that you can take touring plans with you to the parks. I wasn't kidding because I have the lines application right here on my iPhone. It tells me wait times, fast pass times, as well as the best parks to visit, park hours, Lots, lots more. Nothing else like it. Again, go and check it out over at touringplans.com. Read their blog. Lots of good stuff uh, there. So for tonight's news, uh, there's really one thing that I wanted to more discuss with you than tell you about, because I'm sure that you know by now that Mickey's Toontown Fair is going to be closing in just two days to make way for the unprecedented expansion of Fantasyland. You know, and the details that we do know now is that Goofy's Barnstormer is going to remain, although it is going to be rethemed to that circus-themed area, and it is going to be all about the great Goofini. So the track will remain, the airplanes remain, although the, the theme will change somewhat. Everything else in Toontown, from what we understand, is going to go away, and that includes Mickey's and Minnie's country houses, Donald's boat, Pete's garage, the face painting, Toon Park, everything else. Mickey and Minnie, you can still find them temporarily over in Tomorrowland. They'll be sort of by the walkway by Space Mountain, heading towards what was Toontown. Uh, Tinkerbell and her friends are going to move over to Epcot later on this year. But again, if you're looking to find Mickey and Minnie, they'll be in Tomorrowland temporarily. Eventually going to move over to a permanent home at the Exposition Hall on Main Street, USA. And there's a lot of interesting things, I think, about the closing of Toontown. Uh, as I said, it was the first and only new land ever added to the Magic Kingdom. It's also going to be the first land ever to be taken away. But things have come full circle. It, when it opened as Mickey's birthday land back in 1988, it opened as a temporary land to celebrate Mickey's 60th birthday. It only took about 20-some-odd years before they finally got around to closing it down. So it went from that temporary location to something more permanent. And now, finally, uh, Toontown is going away. And I talked about uh, the closing of Toontown actually this morning on, uh, on Fox 35 Orlando. I've also put the question out on Facebook and Twitter. And tonight in the newscast, I want to hear from you in the chat room. I want to hear your thoughts and your feelings about the closing of Toontown. Is it something that you're happy to see go? Is it a place that you visited? Is it something that you as adults maybe got to appreciate more than most others, because I think a lot of people lost sight of the fact that while it was geared towards kids as a place to play, a place to meet their favorite characters, because that really was the genesis of Toontown coming in, because people needed to find a place to find Mickey and Minnie. Uh, I think there was a lot of details for uh, adults to see. There was a lot of great throwbacks and, and homages to early animation, but now that is all going away. What I have found, and again, I've been watching on Facebook and Twitter and again here in the, in the chat, 
is that people are very, very divided about, to some it's the loss of Toontown, to others it's the gaining of the expansion of Fantasyland. Uh, I analogized it this morning <laughs> on Fox when I said, you know, it's like the ex-girlfriend. You know, you don't really realize what you have, you don't start to appreciate it until she tells you that she's leaving. And then you're like, wait, whoa, whoa, I love you. No, oh, come on, I'll come visit you every day. So it's, uh, you know, it's like Toontown. It's like the Adventures Club where people said, hey, I, you know, I would have gone to Toontown more now that it's going away. Um, Andre Willie is asking if it's too late to get the 20,000 leagues subs back. <laughs> Same thing with Mr. Toad. You know, a lot of people uh, were sad to see Toad go. Uh, Sammy K, other people saying they can't wait for the new stuff. Uh, other people saying they would have liked to have spent more time in Toontown. Now that they understand more, uh, a lot of people do look forward to the changes on, uh, that are on the horizon. But I think, too, a lot of people thought about Toontown as a place that was just for kids. Um, Stephanie and Larson are here with us tonight. What did you guys, what were your thoughts about, uh, about Toontown closing? The only thing that I ever remember about Toontown was when it was Mickey Starland and seeing a show, uh, that, that Disney afternoon show. Okay. Oh, so you saw, only, yeah. So you saw like enough. the Ducktales kind of yeah, Rescue Rangers. And so as an adult, you never and, felt compelled yeah. to go back. What about you? When I was a kid, I used to love going to the Toontown Fair in the mornings when Magic Kingdom was empty. So we'd go with my, we'd wake up really, really early, and my my brother and I and my parents would go. And I remember doing Barnstormer, and I remember before Barnstormer was there, but I also remember playing in Ducktales. Uh, excuse me, in Donald's ship and I'll miss that I, 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 but I mean at the same time I've outgrown it right. I personally now when we go through I always just feel like it's too crowded it's not what I you know I'm, I'm excited to see what's next so it's I'll have memories from it but I'm excited to see what new memories will come from and I think that's what a lot of people feel is that they're excited okay. to see what is next um, they're looking to see what's on the horizon because I think a lot of us have uh, built in this this faith in Disney and knowing that what is coming is going to be something hopefully Pretty spectacular. I think it's going to appeal to a wider audience, maybe, than Mickey's Toontown did. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, both in the chat here and um, on Twitter and Facebook and emails, even this morning, specifically about Mickey and Minnie's houses. That sort of was the cornerstone of Toontown. Uh, some people liked going through. There was a lot of great uh, gags and puns in there. And there was a lot of discussion initially when they talked about Toontown closing some of them were saying, yeah, Mickey and Minnie, don't worry, Mickey and Minnie's houses are not going to go away. There was speculation that they might go to Disney's Hollywood Studios. What I'm understanding now is that everything is going away except for the train station, which is going to close as well once Toontown closes. There no longer will obviously be a station stop there until it reopens as Fantasyland. But the houses are going to go away because they're saying the permanent home is going to be at Exposition Hall. So... That's going to be interesting, too, to see how that is going to impact and affect guests going to find Mickey right on Main Street. Uh, I think a lot of kids might not get past, you know, going under the train tracks and going right into Exposition Hall in order to start meeting the characters that, that they're seeking out first. Um, people are saying, yeah, they loved going through Mickey's and Minnie's house. Uh, somebody's asking about Disneyland's Toontown being leveled, that is not going to happen. It's a completely different sort of animal out there than it is here. Uh, Toontown is, in Disneyland is where they lived. Here is where they just vacation, so it's okay if, they, uh, <laughs> if, they're, if they're gone. Uh, somebody said to put Toontown where Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Over on Facebook, I was looking at some of the comments earlier today as well, too, when I put this question out. And again, it was very interesting. Uh, some people said that they were going to miss the houses. Other people said it's definitely time for a change. Can't wait to see how it all develops. Um, some also people said, again, it was very, very sad. As much as I love the houses, it's time for a change. So it, I was, I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised, as to how much of a split there really is. Um, I think a lot of people are happy that the Barnstormer is going to stay. It's a great attraction for kids, especially if, that are maybe not tall enough like myself. So the big boy roller coasters, and again, not quite as scary as some of the other attractions they can't make on as well. Um, let's see what other people in the chat room saying. Scott Otis, who's on the opposite side over there, come over here and tell us what are your feelings about the, the closing of Mickey's Toontown Fair. I know that it's something you pretty much ran to first thing in the morning as well. Usually first thing in the morning just to see all, all of my favorite characters, Mickey. 
Pluto and all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, with, with what is coming in, I'm actually okay with this. You know, it was uh, meant to be something permanent, or sorry, temporary originally. So um, I think with what we're getting in, in, a, in its stead, I think this is a good change. So a lot of people are asking about what's going to happen to the houses. Uh, I think even Jackie this morning said, you know, we're going to start to see the houses on eBay. And I wonder if it's something that they're going to demolish. I mean, I'd love yeah. to get some props from, if you have any pull, I'd love to get maybe one of the pictures off the wall or Minnie's phone or anything. They'll probably save as much of the little stuff as possible. The, the houses themselves, you know, we have a good construction company here that will... We'll make better stuff. Uh, the, the <laughs> probably we don't uh, need those. Uh, you know, with, with the destruction of those, we'll get better things. Uh, I saw Mark asked in chat if, you know, this section of Fantasyland is really going to be less about princesses and villages. It's really going to be sort of the right. circus-themed area. Right. Are they going to section this off and make this sort of a separate second, you know, the, the new seventh land yeah, in the Magic um, Kingdom? What I could tell just from looking at the map, it de definitely does look sectioned off. I, it'll still be part of Fantasyland proper, but um, it'll be definitely a separate segment of, of Fantasyland, just like you know the Caribbean Plaza is a, a separate part of Adventureland. Right. So it'll be kind of like that, I would imagine. It won't be um, blocked off separately on the map as same, but it's going to be obviously very differently themed. It appears that way, yeah. Um, I just saw Jeremy said, yeah, some of the props in the houses will likely be heading out to the Disney archives. That makes a lot of sense. Sure. Um, they'll take some of those things they'll, that... They'll have their, their pick of, of which things they'll, they'll, they'll choose. Which is a pretty good gig. If you're yeah. Becky Klein from the archives walking in and saying, I want yes, no, 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 yes, yes. No, 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 no. So um, a, a lot of good stuff that they can, uh, that they can certainly save there as well. Uh, Crisby2000 said, I feel like Disney listened to the outcry of people who complained that the original plan for the expansion was much too much about Tink and princesses. Crisby, I wholeheartedly I agree. Yeah. Uh, and I applaud the Disney company for doing that because it shows that they are listening and not listening just to guest surveys from people who are coming in the parks, but something that they couldn't do 10 years ago, which is listening to the exactly. online community, which is certainly very vocal. They do have a forum and forums to voice their opinions in, unfortunately made those changes before they started doing right. massive construction of, of some of the, the buildings they originally had planned. They added the mine cars, though. They did add the mine cars, and I think uh, <laughs> I, I think that's going to be uh, one of the best additions because it not only brings in a new attraction, but it's going to be a new attraction that's going to appeal to a wide audience. It's going to be for boys and for adults as well. Because I'm looking forward to it. And the other thing, too, it's, it's a different type of attraction as well because of the ride vehicles that they're going to be using. And can you keep it down back there? We're trying to broadcast here. So this is one of the, the nice things about being on the, uh, in the boardwalk is that you do get all the ambient sounds. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, what are they going to name the new area? So Lynn's King, it looks like it is going to just remain as Fantasyland. It's not going to be sort of delineated as Fantasyland versus... Circusville or Otisburg or anything I think like that. that. Circus thing had, had a, a name with the word story in it somehow. I, do you remember what that was? Uh, uh, you know, the Circus McGurk is the best actor to do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, Not I, sure, but it'll all be circus. part of Fantasyland proper. So. Yeah, and... Um, Different parts of it. So did anybody, when they heard that Toontown was closing, did anybody make a special trip or were you able to come out and want to see Toontown one more time? Maybe get your audio guide to Mickey's Toontown Fair and really appreciate all the details at the land or listen to the DSI that we did uh, earlier on. Did. On Monday, I, I took uh, your, your audio guide there. And Thank you for the shameless plug. And I <laughs> went through the entire land. It was great. And you, I, I even got to meet Mickey Mouse. Did you? Like you, said, you, said one word, you said one goodbye to Mickey and said, see you in exposition. exposition. That's what I'm curious to see, is how they're going to use yeah. that space yeah. for the meet and greets. Remember, that area was originally built back in about 73 for the Walt Disney Story in that area behind Exposition Hall. It's been closed for years. They did use it for some meet and greets. They had some photo opportunities back there. Um, so I'm curious when that opens, probably later on in the spring, what that's going to look like. So, um, But I think a lot of people actually did go out and want to get their last look at Toontown, hopefully appreciate it more. Uh, I know that my kids, you know, who are five and seven, so take it from whence it comes, 
were upset to see Toontown going, but then when we told them about the other stuff that was coming, they got over it. Got it. <laughs> Real but, quick. And they understand that there's still a place that they can go and find Mickey, Mickey and Minnie. You can go to Epcot and you can find the princesses as well. Uh, I, think really I think what really bothered me about Toontown Fair was that there's so much that you... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to talk louder. <laughs> I think what really bothered me about Toontown Fair was you couldn't... There's so much you couldn't really go into. Like, if it, like I always wanted to go into Pete's garage. Like, I always wanted to meet Pete there because I loved Goop Troop. You know, I, I wanted I wanted more of it, and I never really got it. It was kind of like, I remember when it was the birthday land, it was all, like, storefronts, and that always bothered me as a kid. I always wanted to go inside. So I feel like that's what was missing with that. So I'm excited to see what they bring next. Yeah, a couple of people. So M Mouse 1026 Echo sentiments that I saw again on Twitter and Facebook and in the chat, which is, I was actually pretty sad, didn't think I would be. Uh, and that's why I use that, that sort of ex-girlfriend analogy, like, hey, wait a minute, you know, don't go, all the plants will die. And uh, <laughs> sorry for the vague stripes reference. Um, but I think that's what it was, of, you know, obviously much more passionately so about Adventures Club, but to a certain degree also about Mickey's Toontown Fair. Um, so NJ Boy at NC State says, the main problem with Mickey and Minnie in the front of the park is that they'll be much less accessible. It'll be insanely crowded in the town square area. Again, NJ Boy, I want to see how that queue area is going to work because believe it or not, Exhibition Hall and the old Walt Disney Story area does go pretty far back. So it'll be interesting to see. I don't know that it's going to necessarily spill out into Toon Square proper, but by the same token, Toon Square, Toon, Toon Square, Town Square now is a place, especially early in the morning, that you do get to meet a lot of characters. They are scattered about the perimeter as well as in the center. So now that is going to be sort of the de facto area to meet all the characters. Uh, not necessarily on a schedule. It will create a bottleneck. Is going to is going to be interesting to see. And if so, how are they going to be able to adjust? There won't be a line. There won't be a line at a Splash Mountain or Thunder Railroad. <laughs> That's right. Think about it that way. Um, Crisby2000 also said that they always found Fantasyland itself to be lacking a bit of magic and theming. I hope the makeover injects a healthy dose of theming. I think you're right because if you deconstruct Fantasyland in its current state, it really is just sort of a straight shot from the teacups over to the, uh, the Skyway to Tomorrowland Station. What you're going to get with Fantasyland is not only much more theming, but it's going to be dimensional theming. You're going to have mountains. You're going to have little bridges. You're going to have water effects. So it's going to add a lot more to the space. You're going to get that sense that you're walking through a village as opposed to walking from attraction to attraction. So that really, for me, is one of the biggest parts, that when you come through the castle, the reveal isn't going to be just the castle anymore. The reveal is going to be the fantasy land that you see behind it. And I can imagine looking over, it's not Cinderella's carousel anymore, She, in the divorce, I guess she gave it to the prince. <laughs> Looking over the carousel, <laughs> you'll be able to see mountains in the distance. And, and that's what I'm looking to see as well, is that reveal as well. Jimmy Kenny, I too wish the Skyway was still there, because imagine those views that you would get yeah. of Fantasyland yeah. and yeah. Tomorrowland. Uh, it was a shame to see that go. Yeah. Um, I understand why it went away, uh, so at the very least for operational purposes. Uh, but again... Um, yeah, Dustin says they can do a lot more now with the level of thieving. I, I agree, and I think you're really going to get a sense about... Because, you know, if you look at Fantasyland now, you know, you are within those castle walls, but I think most guests don't understand it. You will really get the sense that you are being transported into another area, much like I think that you get when you go over to Adventureland. So, um, again, just interesting, and I wanted to get your guys' opinions on whether you consider it the loss of Toontown or the gaining of the extra space for Fantasyland, how you felt, maybe how your kids felt as well. I'd love for you to continue the conversation in the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Radio. You can comment over there as well. Also, feel free. You can email me at lou at www.radio.com or call the voicemail at 888-703-2171. Leave your comments about Toontown there as well. Also, don't forget to come by and check out the podcast every week over at www.radio.com or in iTunes. There's also a blog, forum, photo galleries, uh, new videos pretty much every week. Just posted a lot of videos about the dream. There you can also order signed copies of my Walt Disney World trivia books and the audio guides, including to Mickey's Toontown Fair on CD and all kinds of links to 
how you can connect with me in the show, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, lots more. Uh, I want to say thanks again to uh, my friends who joined me tonight, Mr. Scott Otis on the opposite side of the computer over there. He, of course, has to get his FaceTime in. <laughs> say hello. Good to see you, everyone. Stephanie and Larson, soon to be Mr. and Mrs. Stephanie and Larson, look forward to following you guys along on your uh, adventure to, uh, to wedded bliss, as it were. Uh, that's going to do it for this week's show. Again, don't forget, every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern at www.newscast.com. There you can find the live show. Come by, join us, and chat. Otherwise, watch the videos and comment over on YouTube. So until next time, thanks again for watching, everybody. Thanks again to my sponsor, touringplans.com. Go check them out and download the Lions application as well. So until next week, see ya.